Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me yet again and continuing to support this channel and everything that I do uh, with Midgard Musings. All of your support is greatly appreciated. Um, today's video subject is, uh, as you can see by the title, is going to be on the concept of honor, okay, from like a heathen perspective. Um, because I've seen the word used a lot, you know, obviously we, we all know what honor means. We're going to get into the definitions of things a little bit. Um, but I think for heathens specifically, uh, it carries a different uh, sort of description or, or, or it has different meaning uh, to us, or to a lot of us anyway. And I wanted to talk a bit about that and give some examples of where I see um, the differences or some of the similarities as well as um, you know how just like my own approach to it or my own view to it so go ahead and get our incense lit and the candle lit and get into that discussion on honor today Nowadays, especially in the heathen circles and the pagan circles and things, you know, live with honor, be honorable. Um, uh, it's listed, I believe, as one of the nine noble virtues, the NNV, as they're, as they're sometimes shortened to and called. Um, so it, generally speaking, has a very important role or an important part um, in heathen worldviews and heathen practices. But I want to talk a bit about why and, and what it really truly means from a heathen perspective. So the modern word for honor, of course, uh, has meanings that include things like, you know, um, a good name, some sort of a, a good public esteem, you know, your reputation, that sort of thing. Um, and it also has meanings of a kind of a keen sense of what's right and wrong. Um, and adhering to those principles or those those things that are considered right. Okay. Now that definition or that the focus up there is what I wanted to talk about from the heathen perspective on it because this definition of you know having a keen sense of what is right and adhering to principles uh, you know that are considered to be right right action 
that definition fits closer to um, what the word meant to our arch heathen, arch -heathen ancestors. Okay? And um, honor was kind of the same thing as, as social status or reputation um, and the perceived power that one had uh, within the community. Um, so in a, in a sense, or if you wanted to like kind of reduce it down to one word, you might could say that it was uh, a person's privilege. You know, what they were uh, privileged to be able to, to do. So you had those in society who were um, with honor and those who were without. Um, it's not something that you can have within yourself. It's something that is given to you by the community, something that is bestowed on you uh, through our deeds and whatnot. We're going to get into the, talking a little bit about that uh, towards the end of the video. But uh, I think the most, most of the native words in Germanic languages for honor have, uh, you know, had, or had secondary or uh, tertiary sense, senses such as fame, like I said earlier, respect. Um, those, 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 just, those types of things seem to be more uh, just outgrowths of what the primary meaning of it to be was, you know, the adherence uh, to principles or, or, or things that were considered right. Because naturally, a person who was right and honorable would also have a good reputation and the respect that comes with it because those are the things that they did so um, by their deeds and by their actions and by the things that they uh, they carried out um, they just were they, did, they had a good reputation for that so this left kind of leads me to the point of how and the perception of what is good or what is right you know um, and adhering to principles that are quote-unquote right um, it's not that isn't something that we can technically globalize okay from a, especially from a heathen context and I'm gonna give an example uh, of what I feel as to why that is okay because the perception of what is right can differ very you know very greatly um, so let's take for example that we have a family um, maybe they're a heathen family um, you know, so you have a husband, his wife, maybe some kids, and um, just as a hypothetical example, we'll just paint a scenario for you all to kind of picture in your mind. Um, let's say that this this heathen family um, who lives modern in modern times, like like we all do, is you know walking down the street. They're they're not my they they're not what you would say the the best off. Okay, financially speaking, they have some financial troubles, they have to really watch their money, they have to watch everything uh, when it comes to the home because, uh, you know, they're just, they're not that well off. Um, so they're walking down the street doing whatever together as a family and uh, they come across this homeless person uh, who's begging for money, who needs money themselves. And um, let's say, for example, the, the, the wife of this family, the mother of their children, uh, has sympathy in her heart and feels bad for this homeless person and uh, gives him a few dollars or gives him some money or whatever um, to help him out, to help out this homeless person. Now, for the majority of folks that were to see this situation and not know the, the specifics behind what this family is going through, they would look at this deed that was done and say, wow, what a, what a kind thing, what, a, what an honorable thing to do, to think of somebody else who they don't know and, and give them money that, you know, um, to somebody who they've never met before. And they say, what an honorable thing to do, it's so nice. Um, but the perception uh, of that is askew because we, the, the husband of the family, um, you know, he works very hard for what little money they have and the wife of the family works hard for what little money they have and they have to really be watchful and careful and her action of giving this money away uh, to somebody who is outside of that inner circle outside of that in and guard outside of that social family construct it could be damaging the uh, lifestyle of her family and the things that are going on and the husband is upset that, he, that she would do such a thing 
um, without first talking with him or without first, you know, consulting with him or, or making sure that they could afford to do such. And therefore, that action of hers was not honorable for the family because what she did could be detrimental to their well-being. You know, so the perception of what is right, um, we, we, we can't globalize what is right. What is right, from a heathen context, uh, from a heathen perspective, is that which is right for the tribe, that which is right for the community that they are connected to, and those deeds that are done uh, as right deeds, as, as good deeds, as things that will help the, the community, uh, that is what is right. Not just doing for everybody else, even though from an outsider's perspective, looking in, she did, quote, the right thing, or she did a right thing. Uh, no, in fact, what she did uh, was not right because it could, it, it could, you know, potentially harm the, the luck of, of her clan and of her family and how the family is involved with their tribe. It could potentially, you know, be damaging to the luck of the tribe. And so it was dishonorable. It was a dishonorable thing for her to do what she did. Um, no matter what the intent behind it was, it was you know she should focus first on her inner circle, her inner yard, her inner yard. Um, and so, just as an example, as, like I just mentioned right then, um, it's it's important to take into consideration the fact that you know that which is right um, does not necessarily mean what everybody else sees as right. It's what is right for the tribe, what is right for the, that family, that clan, whatever the social construct, whatever you want to call it, it is. Um, so we have to be, we have to take those things into consideration when we're talking about, you know, adhering to principles that are right, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So what I say that, you know, what she did uh, could have been a way of not bringing honor to the family. Uh, and, and then by extension to the tribe, uh, we, we need to ask, you know, what does it mean to bring honor to the family? And, and, and what is honor uh, from the heathen perspective? And um, it, it goes into other things that are very important uh, from a heathen perspective, and that is uh, what is worth. What, it, what, what your worth is, what worth has, what, that me, what the word means. So honor um, or worth, you know, is uh, getting smoked out here by this. It, it, in my opinion, it's, it, it's the just esteem in which a person or family uh, or group even is held um, by the community. So the honor of individuals um, these are the things that are like building blocks uh, for the Inangard of, the, of society, the, 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 the things that build a strong Inangard, that, that build a strong clan, that build a strong hearth. Um, the honor is, th those, that is, are the building blocks of that. So naturally when, when people are honorable and when people, you know, do that which is good, do that which is right, uh, following tribal through or law, um, society as a whole just tends to function way better, right? It, it, it makes sense when you have those out there that are doing things unlawful or, or you know, d damaging, it, it obviously hurts society as a whole. So looking at this, you know, from a, from a heathen perspective and how the heathens of uh, of old, our, our Archie heathen ancestors used to live in the types of societies that they lived in. You know that honor thing is is a, is a big one to keep society flowing uh, in, in a good way and in a way that is uh, smooth and, and there's no disruption to things. So, like I mentioned earlier, a little bit. You know, honor isn't the thing that's found uh, within us. It's it's. Our deeds and our actions um, have an impact on what our worth is, um, what honor we have is, is, is determined and based off of our deeds, and then those things, you know, honor is bestowed upon us by society, by, the, by our community. We are an honorable person based off of what we do. We have worth uh, based off of what we do, or we have less or more.
uh, depending on all those types of things. So, you know, I think it's, it, it has a lot to do with perception and then understanding things, you know, because the society, the way Heathen society was back then is, is of course, society now is, is very different, at least in a lot of parts of the world um, that don't have that real tribal view of things. And I know I'm coming at this from a, from a very tribalist approach or very tribalist view, um, but that just tends to be the, the, the model of heathenry that I lean more towards, and it's, and it's where I see heathenry uh, surviving and thriving is at the tribal uh, level. So however you were to, you know, however if, if people watch this and you know you have a kindred or a tribe that you're in or a part of or looking to be a part of, how each individual group or collective does their things, there's no one set way um, to, for it to be done. But there's plenty of examples um, uh, you know, throughout history of, of how those societies live and we can glean from that and we can build our own societies off of those concepts, you know, the whole thing with honor and worth, what is right, what is, you know, good. it's not a globalized thing, it has to be something that is looked at from a much smaller level and uh, with the people who you share your, your lives with and in your community with. So that's my take on what honor means, you know. Um, my honor is, is bestowed upon me by uh, society or by my community based off of what I do. Um, it's not something that I pull out from within myself. It's not something that I just have because uh, just, you know, it has to happen. It has to come from me doing things and showing my worth and showing that there is honor to be uh, had. So the decisions that I make, the actions that I take will have an impact on my worth and an impact on my honor. So I hope that this video was an interesting one. I hope you guys liked it. If you have your own concept of honor and, and what you feel uh, to be honorable is, go ahead and drop your comments down in the comment section. And I'd love to hear from everybody and, and hear what you guys have to say about it. Thank you again for continuing to support Midgard Musings. Let's keep going for 2,000 subscribers uh, by or before January 1st, 2020. Or <laughs> 2020. So, um, That'll be it for me today, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Hail, and I'll see you in next week's video.